Good morning, my friends. It's Monday morning, and what better way would I have than to start with chasing my dreams, right? Creating a fantastic YouTube channel where everybody subscribes and it just blows up and grows to a million or maybe more. <laughs> but in any way, today we have a topic we need to talk about. It's a new car that came out which left everybody shocked. Oh my god, no! No! The world is going down because BMW just brought out the new M5 Touring. Now why is that a big thing? Is it because it's ugly? Is it because it doesn't look right in the eyes of the population? No, no. This time it's only because of the weight. Now, I agree with everybody, the weight is absolutely insane. But before we talk, before we talk about the weight and the technical specs of the new car, let's go back to the beginning of the BMW M5 Touring because that is actually a big thing. They didn't produce it a lot. Now, the first BMW M5 was the E28, which didn't have a touring version. They presented it with the E34. And back then it was an incredible car, man. It was tackling supercars. 0 to 100 kph in 6.1 seconds. It had a 3.8 liter naturally aspirated inline six cylinder engine with 340 horsepower and could top out at 250 kph. Now it was on the heavier side, 1.75 tons, which made it interesting for people that wanted a sporty car but also needed family cargo space and so on so very very successful and still to this day an absolute classic but they noticed they didn't sell a lot so they ditched it e39 didn't have one but then 10 years later the e60 came out now why was the e60 m5 so special well very simple it had a v10 engine five liter v10 naturally aspirated engine i mean imagine and I'm driving this engine right now and I still to this day can't believe that they put it in an E61 Touring. That's insane. <laughs> Why would you do that? I mean, it revs up to 8,250 RPMs. It has 507 horsepower, 520 newton meters of torque, and it has actual torque from 3,500, it really pushes forward. So that is very interesting to me. Now the car had almost two tons, which is on the heavier side, as, as always. It's an absolute classic. The E61 M5 Touring is a classic. You won't find them anywhere for a normal price anymore. That's it, train has gone. <laughs> now we have to talk about the latest one, and it's the G99 Touring. Now, big, big problem. Two things that I see are problems. The looks are phenomenal. I love the looks. It looks to me like a modernized E61 M5. Nothing to say there. I love the front design. I love the rear. They look similar. It's a beautiful car. I really enjoy the looks of the new M5. I really do. I think it's absolutely brilliant, especially the Touring. Really is a fantastic looking car. I love the shape of the headlights. I love the taillights. I love the exhaust place placement. It's just beautiful to look at. And we will get the car I think in October where we can do a full detailed review for you to check it out. The problem that I have with it is basically the same as everybody else is the weight, right? But it's not just the weight, it's also the batteries. The thing is, the car is insanely heavy, which is not really the problem because with tuning you can make it faster. But I believe that the F90 is going to be faster than the latest M5 and that never happened. That never happened. The F90 is going to pulverize it, especially the competition version of it. 626 horsepower, what can you do about that, in all honesty? Now, I am quite cu curious if they will bring out an M5 CS without batteries. I don't know, I really don't know. But those 727 horsepower on the car with the weight, I don't know, man. I don't know what they thought. You should have been able to lap the car, drive back home, lap it again, drive back home and so on. But all the weight on the wishbone, on the suspension, on the brakes, it is going to, to break terribly. And especially five, six years from now, those cars will cost a fortune to maintain. So I believe, spoiler alert, I believe that the F90 would be a great buy now for people that look for a car with value that could go up and especially with a faster car, right? Will I buy an M5 F90? Not yet. I think they will go down in price a little bit more. And once they reach the lowest point, which should be at around 50,000, I believe, 
Uh, I don't think that they will go under 50,000, but when they reach right the point of 50, 45 to 50K, I think we could buy it, right? That is, the, that is the right time to buy those cars because all of a sudden they're gonna rise up in value and so on, just like the E60 did, just like the E92 M3 and all of those cars did. And I'm waiting for the same thing to happen with this E63. Now, that was my thought on it. It's, it's incredible, but still, some bullshit ideas have been done but they anyway they have to do it otherwise we won't be able to enjoy a v8 anymore okay so rather put a battery in than lose the v8 forever well that's it thank you very much for watching god bless you and see you on the next